experimental flows, emotional melodies, and genre blending productions. These are just a few of the many elements that make Lil Uzi's music so energizing and entertaining to listen to. From his more emotional melodic tracks to his super hyped up rock rap rage records, Lil Uzi undoubtedly has a talent to move a crowd and always gives his listeners something to feel whenever they listen to his music. And in this video, we're going to go over exactly how Lil Uzi achieves this melodic yet energetic sound, breaking down the mixing techniques and effects that you could implement to have your listeners playing your music on repeat. So if that's something you may be interested in, then don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so that way you can stay tuned for when I drop more vocal tutorials like these. So the song we're going to be using today is from my very talented friend YVS Village and you can check out the full version of the song along with all of Village's socials and music in the description down below. Here's a little sample of what it sounds like. Don't be feeling bad, girl, I'm a hoe too She back outside today, she doing her own thing All her friends are tell that she got a bad game Been around me so much, she speaking my own language I also wanted to quickly let you guys know that I just recently started a Patreon where you could get access to the Pro Tools project files for this video, along with all the previous project files I've used for this sound like vocal tutorial series. So if you want an even deeper understanding of these techniques with hands on experience, then feel free to join the Patreon down below. Now, although Lil Uzi can be seen using multiple different microphones, sources online say that this is his most recent vocal chain. Vocal chain of Lil Uzi. This is going to be very surprising. For most of the songs, it was a 103 plugged directly into my Apollo in a hotel room or a bedroom or a living room using the SSL preamp and CL1B like inside the console software. But then he later builds on that sound saying this. Now, when we were in the studio, he really liked the sound of the 103, so we still use the 103. And then I would go 103 Avalon CL1B on fix. So if you wanted a similar tone to some of Uzi's more recent work, then you could go for this chain. But never stress because Uzi seems like the type of person to just use whatever gear he has at his disposal. The vocal chain that I used for recording this song was a Neumann U87 into an Art Pro MPA2 followed by the Heritage Audio Tube Sessor. And you'll be able to hear how Village and I still achieve that Uzi vocal sound. All you really need is a fire delivery and an even more fire engineer. So hopping into the DAW, the first plugin that we're going to be using on all of our vocal tracks is Autotune, standard. But I want to quickly note that if you record with Autotune on the record track, then you're that much closer to getting that low Uzi vocal sound. This is because Uzi at times will purposely sing off pitch to get the Autotune to retune the vocals in a specific way, which ultimately influences his songwriting and delivery when recording. This is something that you would not be able to hear if you're still doing the old caveman method, which is writing lyrics on paper or on your notes and then recording the song after. Recording like this will most likely have your delivery sounding super stiff like a robot or even worse, sounding like a lyrical miracle rapper from the early 90s in 2024. I'm just kidding, 90s rap is still fire, but this isn't a 90s rap vocal tutorial. But for those who are just getting into making music, I highly recommend writing your music on the microphone over the instrumental if you get the chance. So that way you can test your lyrics, delivery, and melody live and correct them accordingly which will give your music that raw vibe emotion and energy it needs to have the same impact as Lil Uzi's so again autotune would be the first plugin on all of your vocal tracks and the settings I used for this song was 11 on the retune speed and that's it but adjust this to your taste because although Uzi uses autotune I don't think he cranks it up all the way but again just use whatever you feel is best for the song that you're working on in the moment moving on to the vocal bus processing so the first plugin on my chain is this SSL channel strip to remove all the lows from 75 hertz below and then i hit it with a fab filter pro q3 since lil uzi's more recent stuff was recorded off the neumann tlm 103 the frequency response on that microphone has less bass and more treble compared to the u87 that i used on this vocal so in order to match that tone i just did a low cut filter at 137 hertz with an 18 db per octave slope to remove some of that weight we have coming from the u87 recording which i referenced to a lot of lil 
Uzi songs and he typically doesn't have that much body within his vocals. But just be careful to not overdo this low cut because a lot of the soul comes from the lower mids in your vocals. Which is why you may want to use a more gradual slope versus a super harsh slope so that way you're not taking away too much low end on your vocals. And for these other notches, I just use the dynamic EQ on Fab Filter to tame additional room resonances and harshness that I was getting from my raw recordings. And with this Fab Filter EQ, when it comes to using the dynamic EQ versus just a plain old notch, the way I like to think about it is if I only hear specific resonant frequencies popping out within the vocals on certain sections, for example, let's say I only hear this boxy tone right here on the hook, but not the verse, then I'll just typically use this dynamic EQ feature since I don't want to completely remove these frequencies whenever they're not present. But if I hear a frequency that I do not like that is playing within the entirety of the vocals, then I'll be a little bit more precise and then just notch out that frequency completely, shaping my overall vocal tone. So that was it for this first Fat Filter Pro Q3. Then surprisingly, I didn't use any traditional compression on my vocal bus because I felt like I already had a super consistent vocal because I was getting a lot of compression from my analog compressor, which was the tube sessor. And if you look at the waveforms here, you'll see that it's already pretty consistent. So it wouldn't really make too much sense to squash it even more with additional compression. But the one thing I did do to add some bite and a little bit more weight to the vocal to bring it more forward in the mix was add some parallel compression. So for those who may not know what parallel compression is, it's basically when you send the signal of your vocals to a compressor and on the compressor, you squash the signal being sent from your vocals or whatever other source you're sending to it and then blend the squash signal with your original signal to give your vocals more weight, body, and presence that helps them cut through within the mix while still preserving the original dynamics of the uncompressed vocals. So to achieve this parallel compression, I used a plugin called the Parallel Aggressor from Baby Audio. I like this plugin because you could just go ahead and throw it on your vocal bus and then do all the parallel processing from the plugin, which means that you don't have to route out any signal within your DAW like traditional parallel compression. So it makes this highly convenient. And if you look at the plugin itself here on the left we have the spank module and then on the right we have the heat module and then in the middle here we just have our fader which is just the dry signal spank is the compressor styled algorithm that sounds very punchy which is good for drums but wasn't the sound that i was going for with these vocals which is why i have the fader turned all the way off which basically means that it's not doing anything and it's essentially the same as bypass but on the right we have our heat module which is basically a warm analog modeled saturation algorithm so in simple terms just think of the left as your compression and the right your saturation so to get an effect of the parallel processing, all you really have to do is slide these faders up and then you start sending signal into the modules. So if I hit the solo button right here, you'll be able to hear what that sounds like. Said she got a bed, I got a bed too. Ask him about my son, oh like I know you. We ain't never do what we supposed to. Don't be feeling bad, girl, I'm a hoe too. So that's just the heat that we're adding to the signal. And if you guys wish to drive more of your dry signal into these algorithms to get a more dramatic sound, then you could turn up the spank or heat knobs right here to get a more dramatic effect. This is what just the heat turned all the way up sounds like. Said she got a bed, I got a bed too. Ask him about my son, oh, like I know you. But for this song, I just left it at 50. And on the right here for our heat module, I just click this little tone button right here, which just adds a little bit more bite and saturation to your parallel signal. Then you have this auto gain feature here, which is enabled by default, but I just turned it off. And then I just adjusted my output gain manually to make sure that I'm level matching my signal correctly. So this is the before without any parallel processing. Said she got a bed, I got a bed too. Ask him about my son, oh, like I know you. And this is with the parallel processing. Said she got a bed, I got a bed too. Ask him about my son, oh, like I know you. So I am slightly just getting a little bit more gain than before, but I liked how that sounded. And since I didn't use this spank section, it's not really parallel compression, but I am getting parallel saturation since I used the heat. That just added some grit and bite to my vocal that I like that brought it forward in the mix, which is what this plugin is great for because it's an easy way to do both. And if you guys are looking for another plugin similar to this one, then you can use something like CLA Vocals, which I know a lot of people use as well. Moving on, I then use this Fab Filter Pro D Yes, to tame some harsh sibilance between 4,700 kilohertz and 8,500 kilohertz right here. And then that goes straight into another Fab Filter Pro Q3, which again, I just removed a little bit of that low end that was coming from the parallel aggressor. And then I just used these two dynamic notches. And then I was hearing some boxiness around 573 hertz. So like I mentioned before, it was consistent throughout the entirety of my vocals, which is why I just notched it out. And then as far as this upper band right here, I really wanted to tame this frequency because that is one of the 
downsides of using the U87 on some vocals. Depending on the vocalist, it could sound a little harsh and brittle, which is something that you would just have to tame within the mix. Hence this dynamic EQ at 3900 hertz. Then I use this C4 multiband compressor to tame a little bit more of that body in the low end. So everything under 151 hertz right here. And a little bit of the boxiness that I was getting in between 151 hertz and 1273 hertz. So as you can see, I'm just taming these two right here. So let me play for you what I was taming. So this is the body that I was taming. This is the boxiness I was taming. And this is both of the signals that I was taming. But now that we got all of this corrective stuff out of the way, now we can go into the additive, which was this purple M5V EQ that just boosted a little bit of presence at 3 kilohertz at 1.1 dB. Then I use this mag EQ by Plugin Alliance for the air band at 40 kilohertz at about 6 dBs of gain. But this mag EQ has a wide slope, so it gradually slows slides down to where we could hear it and gives our vocals that nice brightness and air that moves it forward within the mix. Then as far as the sends go, I just used a simple reverb and delay. But going back to Uzi's engineer, this is what he says he uses for the reverb and delay on his music. For reverb, it is the R verb and then a Pro Q3 doing some EQ and then the air stereo width. The delay for me is always Echo Boy and then usually follow the Echo Boy up with the air phaser. So normally I don't use R verb all too often, but since Benjamin says he uses it on Uzi's vocals, I went ahead and gave it a try. And with this reverb, there's nothing too crazy going on. I just made sure I timed the reverb so that way it matched the speed and BPM of the session. And then the size, I left it at 100, Diffusion 71, linear decay again nothing too crazy lowered a little bit of the early reflections reverb at zero 100 wet since it's on ascend and then i just dampened it a little bit right here cut out some of the lows and some of the highs within the eq so this eq isn't really anything crazy just turn it up how you see fit again nothing too fancy and then before the eq i just filtered it going in so the signal being sent to the reverb is filtered and then after i filtered the sound of the reverb a little bit more with this fab filter pro q3 right here so filtered out some of the lows and some of the highs and then since benjamin said he uses the air stereo width i went and threw on the air stereo width so that's pretty much it as far as the reverb goes again nothing too fancy and same thing with the delay nothing too fancy the signal going in i filtered it so we're filtering the signal going in for the delay and since he says he uses echo boy i used echo boy at a quarter note with a little bit of feedback and then i just saturated it a little bit and then since he said he uses this air phaser i went ahead and used the air phaser at five percent which slightly changed Changes the sound a little bit but nothing too crazy because again it's only at a five percent mix and then i just filtered it out with the fab filter pro q3 and that's pretty much it for the reverb and delay for uzi's vocals it's usually just straightforward so with all that being said i'm going to play with you the vocals without any processing and then i'm going to play you the vocals with processing so first without any processing don't be feeling bad, girl, I'm a hoe too. And with the processing. Say she got a bed, I got a bed too. I can buy my son up like I know you. We ain't never do what we supposed to. Don't be feeling bad, girl, I'm a hoe too. Nice. If you guys are enjoying the video so far and want to get a little Uzi style mix for your vocals, then feel free to click the link down below to get your music mixed and mastered today. Now back into the video moving on to the ad libs and layers so it wouldn't be an uzi tutorial if there weren't any ad libs or layers and the ad libs and layers are important because they add additional bounce energy and dimension to your music that you would not get if you only had a lead vocal without any ad libs or layers so let me play for you real quick just the ad libs and layers only and pay attention to all the additional movement energy and dimension we're getting from just the ad libs and layers alone
That's the head boppers right there. So the first ad lib that I want to start off with is the whoa ad lib that you'll hear in a lot of Uzi's music. So again, we just had auto tune as the first plugin, right? But then I filtered it out. But then to get that echo, I threw on Echo Boy. So on this Echo Boy, I had it at a 50% mix since we threw it directly on the whoa ad lib track and it's a ping pong delay. I said it's a ping pong right here and then I threw up the feedback. Now, as you can see, I have it in milliseconds, but the way that I got it in milliseconds was I just left it at a note. I left it at an eighth note, but then I put it on time. And then if you hold shift and then drag it back, you can see I moved it back to 186.2 milliseconds. And the reason why I did that was because I wanted the echoes to be a little bit faster than a normal eighth note delay. So that's why I selected the note first and then I went to the time. So it locked it into the time and then I just dragged it back a little bit. So that way that the echo could be a little bit faster. Then we just cut out a little bit of the lows and a little bit of the highs in the echoes. And then after that, I hit it with this Valhalla reverb at a 30% mix. I just turned the pre-delay all the way down and then I timed the reverb to be at 4.02 seconds. And this is what you get. Whoa! Nice. So then for the hook ad libs and layers, we have two things going on. So as you can see, we have hook ad lib one and hook ad lib two. And then we have all the hook layers, which I call them hook doubles right here. So starting off with the hook ad libs, these were the first ad libs we have right here. So if we take a listen. So it's the same thing auto tune to start off with and then I just filtered it out a little bit with more of like a telephone effect so I just boosted 1.5 kilohertz right here at 4 dBs but then I added this little flanger to it so the air flanger is a good stock Pro Tools flanger that you could use and I used it at a 10% so if I make it a little bit more dramatic let me just bypass all the plugins after so you could just hear what it sounds like <laughs> So that's the flanger effect right there, but let's just drive it back to where we had it. And then next I just compressed it. So that way it just stays tucked within the mix. And then I put it on pan man. So that way it's panning left and right because that will happen a lot with Uzi's music. So the preset that I like using a lot is going to basic panning two bar wide slow. So that way it locks to the grid. And then once it locks to the grid, you can choose how many bars you want right here. So I have it set to four bars. I made the width super wide. So that way it goes super left and super right within the stereo field make sure you leave your smoothing on soft because if you leave that hard as you can see it just jumps left and right right so it jumps very harshly but i just wanted it smooth so it pans smoothly and then i just threw on this c4 to tame a little bit of the upper mids which i really wanted to tame more right here for this little phrase to keep it tucked then i did use a send for these ad libs so i created a new reverb track so it's just a simple reverb right these are the settings that i use on the reverb and then i put a delay plug in after it so just a little bit of an echo with a lower mix and then i high feedback so that way it has a little bit more bounce so it's panning left and right and then it has the echo so this is what that sounds like by itself again one more time so you hear the panning left and right and then you hear that reverb tail with a little bit of the echo going on and then as far as these ad libs on this side right here i just kept it simple just a simple filter with the same reverb being sent to it and then what i did was i opened up this window right here and then i just panned it so this was panning left this one's panning right this one's panning left this one's panning right so take a quick listen to what that sounds like here oh, oh. So just basically repeating that. Then for the doubles on the hook, pretty simple as well. Starting off with this one right here. So to achieve that, the first plugin I used was a filter just to cut out a little bit of the lows. And then I used this CLA 76 because it was a little bit faster on the transient. So I really wanted to tame that transient. So if you guys didn't know, on the right is the faster attack and then on the left it's slower but so i just left it right here so it's fast taking off that transient and then a little bit of a slower release so let's see how much compression we're getting with this no you so about 5 dBs of compression and then after that i smoothened it out with a cla 2a compressor so just really pinning that and then right here i saturated it a little bit with saturn to get more of those harmonics that's what saturation is i'll probably make a video about saturation a little bit later down the line but i added this warm tape saturation right here so it brings it forward within the mix Bait two. Bait two. 
But if I mute these two plugins right here, you're going to hear see it's mono right but then so i throw on this fab filter pro q3s to filter out more of the lows and then a little bit more of that body but then this right here the mod delay is where you get that width so if i turn this all the way down it's going to be mono again but if i put it back to where i had it which was 12 what it's doing is it's slightly delaying the right signal by 12 milliseconds which is giving us that perceived width then for the doubles over here it's the same thing, right? Just a little bit of a filter and I boosted a little bit of the highs and then compression. And then I just used a doubler instead of the mod delay because I didn't want it too, too wide. And since this is being sent to the vocal bus, it's, you're still getting the reverb and the delay here, but brings everything together as one. Moving on to this final layer right here for the hook. This was originally on this track, but I wanted to process this a little bit differently. So for this one, I used Autotune's newest feature, which is the Harmony engine right here. So as you can see, we still have our Autotune settings right here like normal. But if you click this, you get the Harmony player right here. And then what you do is you make Make sure you have it turned on and then you have to click the locks right here so they lock into place and then you turn the trigger on right here and then after you set your key and scale if you set your harmony interval to scale then you'll be able to select different harmonies that are matching the key of your song so for this example i just wanted to add a third harmony to my original layer so this is what that sounds like so as you can hear you can hear that little high harmony in the background let me just solo it so you can hear what that sounds like so it pitches the vocals up a little bit, but with everything together. So again, cool, it's a built-in harmony engine. So then what I did was I just turned on this equalizer right here, and then I selected the high cut at a 12 dB per octave, cutting off about 6,000 hertz. And then what I like about this is this EQ only affects the harmonies. So I basically just filtered out the harmonies so that way they're not sticking out too much. So that's for this little last layer right here. And then I just hit it with an EQ, right? So it's like the same EQ boosting a little bit, and then I just compressed it, and then I delayed it a little bit. So again, if I leave it right here, it's just gonna be mono. Mind so everything's in the center but i delayed it a little bit Mind so it makes it wider but then i use a stereo imager just to tighten it just a slight little bit Mind so let me play everything together right here these last two bars ooh, ooh. Only. And then the final thing that we had right here was this harmony. And if I leave only the harmony on, this is what you get. To achieve that sound, everything's more or less the same, right? Just positioning compression another filter the pan man to pan it left to right and then i just added a decent amount of this flanger and then i just threw this reverb on to give it that depth so there you go that's all the processing for the ad libs pretty straightforward and simple once you get the hang of it it's really just copy and repeat with just slight little variations and tweaks but now i want to go into the throw delays and reverbs so starting off right here for the verse ad libs right here i have one throw delay right here so if you can see here i have a throw delay at a 16th note throw delay and this is just being sent at a straight signal. So I gave it its own ad lib track. But one thing that I want you guys to be aware of is this is how I had it set right here. So I had it sent at negative 1.5 to the fader. So if we solo that, this is what that sounds like with the throw delay. Yeah. So that sounds pretty cool. But what I did was on this send, I selected FMP, which means follow main pan. Since I turned it on, it already moved it 40. But basically, when you just throw a send on, it's set to zero. So it's not panned at all. And on this track, as you can see here, I had it panned 40% to the right. So if I just bypass this and just play it. Yeah. See, so it's panned 40% to the right. But then if we turn this on without the FMP, when you send the signal to the 16th note throw delay, the ad lib itself is going to be panned, but the effect isn't going to be panned. Yeah! 
So again, the ad lib is panned to the right, but the effect is still in the mono center because of this pan thing right here. So if you select this FMP, which again means follow main pan, it's going to follow whatever this pan is. So if I turn the pan over here, it's just going to follow it. So as you can see, it automatically follows it. So I set it to 40. So now if we listen, it's going to play the ad lib on the right, but also the effect is going to be panned similarly to the right. So it's going to follow the pan. Yeah! So now you hear the effect more on the right side. So that's a cool thing to utilize within your mixes. And as far as the throw delay, it's just a filter. And then I just put on this echo boy and then I just turned the feedback up. It was a 16th note delay at 100% mix. So that's pretty much it. Simple. Just make sure you do that FMP if you want to have the effect panned to where the main track is being panned. Then if we go to the bridge over here, you will see that I have a throw verb and I have a quarter note throw delay. So to show you the settings on the quarter note throw delay, since it's a little bit more simple, it's just filter again and then just a quarter note delay so that's completely straightforward high feedback 100% mix because it's on a send but let me show you the magic with this throw verb so for this throw verb i just have a simple filter right and then i have a compressor to level the signal before it hits the throw reverb so right here we have valhalla super massive and this is a free plugin which i highly recommend for you guys to get if you guys don't have it already again it's free and right here you have a lot of presets that you could choose from that are really great so i went to the reverbs and then i went to the c large and then I use this Cygnus X1 but then I did adjust a little bit of the settings so I set the feedback at 75 I left the modulation and depth the same the density at 100 and then I lowered the warp to 26 I left the delay at 470 milliseconds but then I changed the mode to Gemini and then the thing about this super massive plugin is that it goes super super in depth all of these modes dramatically affect the sound of the plugin so that's probably something for a later video to go into but it's kind of considered a delay plugin depending depending on how you use it, but then it could also be a reverb plugin depending on how you use it. So the reason why I use this super massive plugin for the throw verb versus Valhalla vintage verb is that it has a nicer tail end and it has more repetitions. So if I play for you the signal of the throw reverb, this is what the Valhalla super massive sounds like. Yeah, if I, yeah. So as you can see, it's still tailing out. So that's why I like using this Valhalla Super Massive because it sounds super lush and it has a really nice tail. So now let me play everything for you guys so you can take a listen to what everything sounds like working together. She back outside today, she doing her own thing. All her friends are telling that she got a bad game. Been around me so much, she's speaking my own language. She's tired of being my side, she wanna be the main thing. Do you remember how we met? How could I ever forget? Just take another shot and remember But why my mind go blank up when I'm with her? Boom. And there you go. That is how you get low Uzi styled effects for your vocals. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like these. You guys really seem to like these videos, so let's just keep the ball rolling. And if you're a beginner engineer or just want to learn how to use Pro Tools better yourself, then don't forget to check out our Pro Tools recording course where I will show you everything about using Pro Tools and get you up and running like a professional engineer in no time. But now that we got our vocals dialed in right, then check out this video right here where you will learn how to record your vocals properly for your next song so that way you'll have an easier time when it comes to mixing your vocals i'll catch you guys in the next video peace